new here, welcome. In this video, I am doing a room slash studio tour. I know I kind of promised this like a month ago, um, but life happens. And I wouldn't say that my room is like 100% set up the way I want it, but it's mostly set up. And you know, is it ever really gonna be fully set up? Like, are the lights ever actually gonna be hung on the wall instead of halfway hung on the little thing that comes out of the heater? Which is probably a terrible idea. I don't know. Um, but honestly, I think this room so far is really cute and has been quite functional for me. So I'm excited to show you how I fit everything into this room because it is quite a large bedroom, but I'm also trying to fit both my bedroom and my sewing stuff and my filming stuff and my art stuff all in this room. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit tight. Let's get into it. Starting off over here, I have this beautiful restored um, antique sewing machine table, which I use for as my computer desk. Sometimes it's annoying because the sunlight here, but generally it's quite gorgeous. Moving on, so then here is the table that I do most of my work on. It has a rotary, excuse me, it has a rotary cutting mat. This one is 24 inches by 36 inches. I just use it as my table surface. On this table, we have various things, some thread snips, um, a kneading eraser, a few writing utensils, chalk, some cotton basting thread, some linen thread, a ruler, various shears and scissors, some sewing clips, pins, sewing needles, etc. Just random stuff that I use quite often just stays out on this table. So you may or may not be able to tell from here, there's a bookshelf here and it's quite close. And this was one of the sacrifices that I made for the space. Um, maybe I could show you. So the table is here, and then in the corner is the bookshelf. And the bookshelf is pretty hard to get to. I just decided to do it this way because uh, I need a lot of storage for fabric and art supplies and various things. Um, and in order to have all of that storage in places where I had direct access to it and also had enough table space just seemed really difficult. So I ended up putting the table in front of this bookshelf. So it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to get to the bookshelf, especially the lower shelf. Um, but so far it's been really good for me. I can still see a lot of my fabric, which is honestly for me the important part because I like to be able to see what I have so I can kind of think about projects. If I have to go look through a box for it, it's a little bit harder for me to kind of brainstorm and, and just kind of think of new projects organically. So I really like being able to see all my fabrics. So I will go through everything on this bookshelf right now. So this is an awkward angle because I'm really short, but starting from the top here, I have my tailoring and structural fabrics here and then here I have some kind of random fabrics, some cotton poly blend, some linen, some cotton, and then some wool and some cotton and wool blend. I think that's what that is. Here I have all of my linens and hemps, and on this side I have silk. Also in this corner there is some Chinese dress history books. Here I have wools, wool blends, suiting fabrics, and some corsetry books, and this thing which has some bobbins, some buttons, some closures, a little bit of silk twist, labels, just various little sewing things. And then below that I have coating fabrics, uh, coating wools, and thicker wools, and this is just some cotton voile, and then another corsetry book and some rulers. And then on the bottom here I have my various disorganized paper type things and art supplies. You'll notice from this point on there are a lot of things in bags that are not particularly well organized. I just haven't taken the time to find containers and storage solutions for all of them and it hasn't been too much of an issue yet. Uh, but hopefully eventually that will happen. And then here on the side I just have uh, a tripod and a roll of paper. And then here is my dress form, and then next to that I have the ironing board, which I honestly meant to put away and take out whenever I use it, but it came out and it has yet to go back, so I think it's just staying. And then behind the ironing board I have my hanging rack where I keep new projects, old projects, things that need to be mended, or things I'm not sure what to do with, and then I have hooks for my patterns. Under the ironing board we have a new camera backpack, exciting, my purse, um, this basket has thread, linen thread, and then back there is a portfolio of art things, another roll of paper, and we have this bookshelf, which is a bit more chaotic. So, over here we have uh, various boxes of things. The top one is embroidery thread, and then there's ribbons, various metal hardware things, 
embroidery hoops and embroidery floss here and then. Here are my large quantities of lace and then back here there's some fabric dye and here are some of my tailoring books, historical dress books, alteration books, and this book which didn't fit on the lower shelf. And then here we have non-sewing books. Actually two of these are sewing books. This is my bin for boning and cords, lacing, twill tape, that kind of thing. Things that aren't stretchy and uh, are long and made of fiber or plastic, which covers a lot of things. And then coming down here, I have various little boxes. This one has silk twist. This one has all of my, all of my needles. This one has various sewing machine related things random stuff behind it, some jars of writing utensils, colored pencils, and brushes. And then this bag of knit fabric, which I have very little of right now, and other random things. So then here I have some more books. Three bags. One is elastic, one are zippers, and one is something else. Honestly, I forget what it is. Some kind of sewing notion that I have too much of and don't know what to do with. Then there are various little boxes and things of buttons more other buttons and then pastels and here i have beading stuff uh fabric flowers fabric scraps more beading and jewelry making stuff and then here i have more fabric flowers and leaves here is my nightstand the book that i'm currently reading highly recommend jewelry things hanging i really love this i think it's super cute and aesthetic and even if i don't wear half this stuff um, I'm going to keep it just to have it on the wall. Jewelry that I have yet to put away, lotion, pearls, water bottles, candles, etc. Chapstick. My bed. And then on this side of the bed, I have a candle, another candle, tissues, snacks, ginger, chewy things, a mirror, some little stuffed animals. We are almost back full circle to where we started. So then the last thing here is... Let's lower this. The last thing here is my sewing machine. Um, this is the sewing machine that I actually use for most of my things. It is a Singer 201-2 from 1951, I think, is when that uh, machine came out. I keep this piece of linen over it just to prevent it from getting super dusty. It's not, you know, any kind of dust cover. It actually has... <laughs> It has a little hem here done in black thread. I did in my What I Learned in One Year of Hand Sewing video um, for hand sewing tips. If you uh, are lost and want to learn how to start hand sewing uh, or how to improve your hand sewing, you should go watch that video, just saying. But yeah, random piece of linen, not even a rectangle. I just throw it on top. Um, I used to throw it on top because I had cats and they would get into the thread so I needed to cover it up. I don't currently have a cat, but my housemate and I are working on that, so I will update you if there is a new cat. Hopefully soon there will be a cat on the channel because I know that half of y'all subscribed for the cat content, so please don't unsubscribe yet. Give me like two months to get a cat. And yeah, this is my center window, which uh, there's not much here. I'm so backlit. Here are some little paper corset mock-ups I've been working on. I was playing with changing the shape of the second to center front piece, um, or changing the angle of it to see how it would change the silhouette. So you might be able to guess the era. This is not a pattern from an extant garment. This is a pattern that I drafted from scratch. Um, so it doesn't have like an era to say that I pulled it from, uh, like directly, but if you want to guess what my intended era for this course it is, let me know in the comments down below what your guess is. You might be more right than me. I'm, I'm curious what year. And give me like a specific year, like don't say 1890 to 1910, like I want a singular, singular year. Uh, no, you can, you can guess whatever you want. I'm just, I'm very curious. And yeah, that's, this is, this is it. Thumbnail? If I'm working, I'm just rolling around. Here. This is the view from the corner with my bed.
That is my room. It was really important for me to make it not only functional, but beautiful because I need to feel good in my space to create. And I think I've done that. I really love the way that the white curtains have bring in this, like the long vertical lines and the diffused light and just kind of make everything bright and aesthetic. So that's fun. Cause I mean, as you've seen my shelves, my bookshelves, the fabric one is pretty cute, but this one uh, is a bit of a mess and has a lot of colors that don't really go together. Um, which is kind of why I put everything in that corner because it's like farther away from everything. Yeah, also you may have noticed all of the fairy lights on the ground. I originally was gonna put them up, like string them up between each window. Um, and then I realized that that would give me more light in the room than I want because they already are quite bright when I turn off the overhead lights, which are currently not on, but it's daylight. Uh, but yeah, I realized that that would actually be too much light. So they're just on the floor for now. I will say there is a bunch of storage under the bed. I decided to go for a high metal bed frame and no box spring so that I would have room for storage and I'm really glad I did because there is two boxes of fabric that I use less often like mock-up fabric and fabrics that I just don't like as much. Under there, there's like a suitcase, ukulele, some shoes. I know there are some people wondering like, where is the rest of your stuff? It's under the bed, which is part of why I got a giant duvet and duvet cover so that that is all hidden. But yeah, most of the stuff that I use regularly is out um, and is accessible, which is great because my probably ADHD brain is gonna forget things exist if they're under the bed unless I like really know that they exist. Like, I feel like it's easier for me to remember that I have mock-up fabric because I know I have to make mock-ups than to remember that I have a certain fashion fabric. The one last question that I have for you all is, what do you think I should do with this duvet cover? I originally thought it was gonna be a little bit of a darker green and got it and I kinda hated it, but then it's been growing on me, but I also, in my panic of thinking it was terrible, bought some fabric dye in both just a darker green of the same shade and also a more blue green. So I'm debating whether I should keep it the same or if I should dye it a darker color. I also really liked having just the duvet insert, which is white, to keep everything nice and bright. So I'm wondering if I go darker with the duvet cover, if it'll just darken the room too much. I don't know, any interior designers or just anyone wanna chime in on what they would do, I would love to hear it in the comments. Also, I am selling this corset. It is a fashion corset. It's one layer of cotton poly blend, one layer of silk. This one closes at 28 inches, so it's ideal for someone with about a 30 inch corseted waist. You can claim it over on my Instagram. There's a reel about it. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Look at these stickers. Also, these stickers from Shannon Makes. Foreshadowing. I will see you next time. Bye.